Being a Republican means you can't take yes for an answer. Mitch McConnell has absolutely no chance of going down in Senate history as one of the great Republican Senate leaders. He will never have a Senate building named after him, like legendary Republican leader Everett Dirksen. Howard Baker was a great Republican Senate leader in the Dirksen tradition. Baker was followed by Bob Dole, who served as both majority leader and minority leader, depending on how many Republican senators he had. Given the increased complexity of everything the Senate was dealing with during the Bob Dole tenure, I think... He was probably the best of all of the Republican Senate leaders. But when Bob Dole resigned as Senate Majority Leader to run for president, greatness in Republican Senate leadership ended on that day in the summer of 1996. Minimally competent and instantly forgettable men followed Dole. Mitch McConnell, who was well on his way to being easily forgettable, until today he was when he took his place in Senate history as the man who has now done the most idiotic thing any minority leader has ever done on the Senate floor, ever. He introduced a bill and asked for a vote on the bill. The majority leader then agreed to have a vote on the bill, whereupon Mitch McConnell changed his mind and opposed his own bill. McConnell went to the floor this morning with a stunt in mind, the kind of thing Senate leaders do all the time on both sides, embarrass the other party by bringing something to a vote that the other party is supposed to be in favor of, and then embarrass the other party by proving that the other party doesn't actually have enough votes to pass it. In this case, McConnell asked for a vote on President Obama's proposal last week to change the congressional pr procedure on the debt ceiling in such a way that it would empower the president to raise the debt ceiling whenever necessary, and it would take a two-thirds vote of Congress to then overrule the president's decision. Where did the president get this idea? He actually got it from Mitch McConnell when McConnell proposed it in 2011 as one of the ideas that he threw around at the last minute in trying to solve the debt ceiling crisis. So here was McConnell this morning asking for a vote on an idea that was originally his but was then adopted by the president and McConnell was asking for that vote to show that Democrats would vote against what is now the president's idea. And then Harry Reid shocked McConnell by agreeing to have a vote on McConnell's stunt right away. Is there objection? Of course, there shouldn't be an objection. The majority leader is now agreeing to what the minority leader asked for, who could possibly object to that. Madam President, reserving the right to object, matters of this uh, controversy, what we're talking about here is a perpetual debt ceiling uh, grant in effect to the president. Matters of this uh, level of controversy always require 60 votes, and so I would ask my friend, the majority leader, if he would modify his consent agreement to set the threshold for this vote at 60. Madam President. Majority leader. Reserving the right to object, but what we have here is a case of Republicans here in the Senate once again not taking yes for an answer. This morning, the Republican leader asked consent to have a vote on his proposal. Just now, I told everyone that we're willing to have that vote, up or down vote. But now the Republican leader objects his own idea. So I guess we have a filibuster of his own bill, so I object. Is there objection to the original request? Yeah, object. Objection is heard. A whiplash. A <laughs> whiplash? Okay, I've spent more time watching the Senate floor than every one of you out there in this audience combined, and you just saw two things that have never happened before. One, a minority leader who has introduced a bill and asked for a vote and then opposing proceeding to a vote on his bill, saying his bill should be subjected to the filibuster-breaking vote threshold of 60 votes. McConnell was, as Harry Reid just said, filibustering his own bill. So that's miracle number one that you just saw. And miracle number two was that the presiding officer played that hour by Senator Claire McCaskill, the presiding officer who is usually in a desperate struggle to stay awake in the most boring assignment a senator can get, presiding over the Senate, a punishment normally reserved only for the junior senators. The presiding officer is not only wide awake, 
she actually comments on what has just happened instead of simply issuing the normal two or three word traffic cop directions that the presiding officer is limited to. Let's just see what she did again. Got whiplash. <laughs> that was a genuinely shocked United States senator. She wasn't trying to be a wise guy. That's not her. She simply couldn't prevent the shock from forming words in her mouth. And you see her there pushing the microphone away, pushing it away a bit too late. What you're seeing is that in her state of shock, her instincts are out of sync. She knew she had to push the microphone away, especially if she was going to mutter something that shouldn't be heard. But the shock pushed the words out faster than her hand could move. Instantly, instantly, the Senate knew history had just been made. So this may be a moment in Senate history when a senator made a proposal and when given an opportunity for a vote on that proposal, filibustered his own proposal. I think we have now reached a, a new, new spot in the history of the Senate we've never seen before. Mitch McConnell was for his bill minutes before he was against his bill. He was forced to re rewrite his position instantly on the Senate floor today because Mitch McConnell forgot the unwritten rule number one. For the Senate Minority Leader, if you pull a stump on the Senate floor, you have to know it's going to work.